Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the very crazy and very unique game from 1993 tournament in St. Petersburg. And I think this city has the monopole of the crazy games because in 1974, uh, just 20 years before, Rafael Vaganian and Viktor Kuprejcik had the also an insane game where Vaganian had the three hanging pieces and Kuprejcik didn't have time to pick any of these pieces and the game ended with the um, spectacular win by Vaganian and he didn't lose even a single piece and if you want to see that game just click the card over there and check after this game uh, how because that was that was a very awesome game and now we have something um, totally different but also crazy because now in 1993 uh, Grigory Serper playing as white sacrificed all his pieces and he still managed to win. So, so this is another, you know, crazy game which I would like to show you. And uh, Grigory Serper as white, uh, 23 years old grandmaster from Uzbekistan. And um, uh, at that time his ranking was 2659. Uh, what we know about Grigory Serper in 1992, uh, he won the silver medal for his team, Uzbekistan, uh, in the 30 chess Olympiad. And um, that's one of his uh, better success. Uh, that was the team success, but definitely very strong player. Uh, his opponent uh, is a Greek grandmaster, Ioannis Nikolaidis. And he's 22 years old um, at that time, and he's ranking 2,505 points. So without further ado, let's check this awesome game. So Serper open with C4. We have G6, so this is English opening, and it's interesting name, Great Snake Variation. Uh, I have no idea how the great snake variation is going, but after e4, bishop on g7, d4, d6, knight c3 and knight f6, we of course have king's Indian defense, and after knight g on e2, knight b on d7, we have Kramer variation of king's Indian defense, knight on g3 by um, Serper and c6 by Nikolaidis. We have bishop on e2 and a6. Bishop e3, so um, just developing the pieces. And here we have h5, so very early h5 uh, by Greek grandmaster and f3 by Serper. We have b5, and so as you see, um, Nikolaid is playing on both of the sides, uh, here on the, on the king side, but also on the queen side. And... Uh, it's interesting what was his idea about the about his king, where he gonna put his king. Uh, here probably the best idea would be just just castle by uh, by Serper, but he played c5, uh, quite provocative move, and uh, Black stands slightly better here, uh, but it's not easy to prove actually. D takes on c5, D takes on c5. Uh, and now h4 would be very strong uh, and this knight actually don't have a really great uh, square to move um, f1 and d2 would have to be played and this knight would be very very passive uh, however we have queen on c7 so Nikolaidis also just um, you know develop the pieces and here we have castle by Serper h4 is coming but now knight have the square for uh, retreat h1. Uh, we have knight on h5 with the plan to jumping on this um, beautiful square on f4. Uh, queen on d2, so preventing that. And also in the future, if black want to uh, castle, then of course uh, this bishop can go on h6 and cause some problems there. Uh, we have e5, so bringing another uh, controller or of this square, so now it's fight of the um, f4 square. Uh, and here we have knight on f2. Uh, black, if, if black now go, go on f4, then white are on time and then can go with the knight on d3 and attack this knight. Uh, 
bishop can come on h h6, but the fight of f4 would be uh, would be rather better for white. Uh, so black decide to bring another attacker um, uh, to the f4 and play knight on f8 with the plan knight on e6 and then um, f4. That would be very very strong plan, but now um, Serper actually play a4. And a4, black has to do something about that. If they do nothing, then uh, look at this. Uh, pawn can pick up the pawn on b5 and then uh, it can't be picked up by the a4 pawn because the rook is without the protection so uh, white would just to capture the, the rook for free so c on b5 would have to be played and then uh, white would have very beautiful pass pawn and it could be even protected pass pawn and very dangerous on the queen side uh, this is why we have b4 and all the show starts right now. Uh, what Grigory Serper did was sacrificing this knight. So he played knight on d5. So this is the, you know, sacrificing the knife. And why did he do that? Because after c takes on d5 and e takes on d5. So now white have the uh, two connected pass pawns, uh, which can be very, very dangerous. Uh, what black can play? Knight on e6 giving back the material and, uh, you know, destroying this, this past pawns uh, connection. So that would be the one idea. h3 with attack on the king would be uh, maybe another idea. Knight on f4 maybe also could be the idea. Uh, however, f5 was played by Nicolaidis. Uh, and what's the problem here? Now we have d6, so uh, white pawns don't wait for anything, they just attack. Queen has to be moved, of course, so queen on c6. And now incredible move, bishop on b5, another sacrifice, because now the bishop is, um, you know, attacked by the pawn, but this sacrifice actually has to be taken, otherwise white would just pick up the queen as queen is pinned. So we have a takes on b5 and a takes on b5 with attack on the queen, but also with attack rook on the, um, on the rook on a8. So black has to choose what to do. Probably the best would be queen on b7, but it was not very easy decision to leave all these three pawns uh, here. Uh, it would not end like this, so bad like this, because for example, after c6, we could have rook on a1, c takes on b7, and now uh, another rook takes on f1 with check, uh, and then bishop on b7. So uh, white would have these two pawns, and um, and white would actually stay better, especially the pieces are already developed while black have these pieces quite on the corner. So uh, that would be okay for white. So black decided to take the pawn on b5 and give back some material, this rook. So we have uh, rook takes on a8 and now uh, rook also attacks the undefended piece on the um, on the c8. So we have queen on c6 defending but also attacking um, the rook. Rook has to be defended and now we have f4. Uh, so this bishop is actually trapped so it has to be sacrificed uh, together with this bishop on b5 um, as this part of the plan. We have rook from uh, first rank going to a7 and now uh, black actually can't take this uh, bishop on e3. What would happen? Actually f takes on e3, rook on c8 with check, queen c8 and now rook on e7, very dangerous attack. King on d8 is the only move and now queen b4 and black gonna be checkmated and they cannot do anything about that. They of course can take the knight on f2 and after king on f2 uh, play something like knight on a6 uh, defending the c7 but it doesn't help um, because queen on b6 anyway and then knight c7 yes rook c7 and uh, and that's all black has to sacrifice the queen if the queen is moved then rook on e7 with check king c8 
and uh, king uh, queen c7 and checkmate so that would not be possible also queen on a6 doesn't work um, that could prevent uh, the move uh, of queen to b6 with check but then we have queen on b8 with check and exactly the same things happen queen c8 queen b6 check king queen c7 and queen c7 with checkmate so um f takes on e3 is impossible we have to play knight on d7 that's what um of course uh, Johannes nikolai displayed and here we have rook on c8 so sacrificing now exchange so another sacrifice uh, rook takes on c8 with check queen takes on c8 is the actually only move and now we have queen on d5 f takes on e3 so taking this uh, sacrificed uh, bishop before and now what white could play is uh, is knight on d3 and this is the strongest move in the position the problem is uh, then the knight couldn't be sacrificed so with moving queen on e6 we have another sacrifice on f2 and this is what happened queen on e6 with check we have king on f8 and now rook takes on d7 e takes on f2 so uh, another sacrifice works we have king on f1 if king on f2 actually uh, black would win so white have to be very very careful here and how that would happen a uh, queen c5 with check and now actually it's forced mate in 11 king e1 queen on c1 now king f2 queen d2 with check king f1 and now knight g3 that would be maybe um, harder to find but uh, knight on g3 with check um, h takes on g3 and now queen on d1 with check king f2 h takes on g3 with check uh, and now if white takes on g3 then we would have um, just check and after moving on g4 we would have checkmate on h4 uh, that's why opening the h file would be um, uh, interesting for black and of course that would end the game uh, if white play on e3 then bishop h6 with check and then um, f4 can be played um, but it's not it doesn't matter bishop on f4 king e4 now queen on d4 king f3 queen e3 with check king g4 and of course queen e2 with check and that would be a checkmate as well so uh, this is why uh, after taking on f2 uh, Grigory Serper play king on f1 uh, here we have queen on e8 trying to exchange the queens uh, but now we have rook on f7 rook on f7 sacrificing the rook now can you can you imagine that so now it's uh, only queen which was not sacrificed yet so queen takes on f7 for free totally for free so white gives the rook uh, and now queen on c8 with check uh, black doesn't have any move have to play a uh, queen on e8 and now we have d7 and of course uh queen can't take because that would be um winning for white so uh king on f7 if knight on f6 uh, it would be uh also winning for white for example uh, d8 with promotion on the queen and after exchanging the queens uh, we could have king f7 very similar queen c7 and white stand better um, can pick up some uh, pieces and of course uh, bring the uh, c pawn to the promotion uh, but we have king f7 uh, immediately and now um, d takes on e8 with check we have rook on e8 and now queen b7 with check uh, and now black played uh, rook on e7 uh, and doesn't matter if play uh, king on f6 uh, queen d7 and uh, promoting the the pawn that would also be uh, better for white uh, but we have rook on e7 
uh, and here uh, we have c6 so sacrificing the queen now uh, but this is only the first sacrifice which black didn't accept uh, because of course if black takes um, then white would just promote the, the pawn so uh, that would be winning for white uh, so what black played is the e4 e4 is important move first uh, it's gonna support soon the the pawn on f2 uh, and also important thing that now uh, the bishop can come on this diagonal so and uh, now the queen is actually under attack and this pawn cannot be promoted because of this bishop controlling uh, b8 uh, this is why white don't have time to pick up the pawn on e4 and have to play c7 we have e3 so very smart um, defending idea by black and now we have queen on d5 uh, and here king on f6 uh, of course king on f8 doesn't work because uh, that would be um, just checkmate rook e8 queen c on c5 with check uh, rook e7 queen d8 with check and of course we would have a checkmate on e7 so uh, this is why king on f6 was played by Ioannis Nikolaidis and now uh, we have queen on d6 king on f7 queen on d5 king on f6 uh, queen on d6 so a couple of times um, uh, repeating the same moves because uh, now we have uh, move 40 so uh, the players um, had to you know uh, reach the time control uh, king f7 uh, and now white had the time to think because now we have the move 30, 41 so white now have time uh, to think what to do and this is what Grigory Serper did he sacrificed the queen the last piece he has and then now he has nothing to sacrifice anymore king on e7 and now uh, we have promotion on the queen and now situation on the board uh, white has the queen black has two pieces but um, totally in the corner so uh, they don't uh, they can't really support the um, the past pawn and this past pawn can be uh, pretty dangerous uh, we have bishop on h6 first uh, defending the e3 pawn uh, and now the plan for white is to um, if you if you actually look at the position so of course b4 is the weakness but also g6 it's quite interesting spot if the queen can actually pick up g6 then could attack these two pieces and once uh, they are taken then uh, of course win the game so that would be the idea and queen of course can um, deliver a lot of checks so let's see how this happen in the game we have queen on c5 with check king e8 now we have queen b5 with check king d8 and now queen on b6 now attacking the uh, g6 pawn we have king on d7 and queen on g6 and here actually uh, Ioannis Nikolaidis uh, didn't resign he play e2 very very sneaky move and look what's gonna happen if white play and uh, not carefully so if the king takes on e2 actually black would win the game because of this fork and black actually could win the game so very dangerous situation uh, so white of course takes on f2 but now we have bishop on e3 with check and now white can't take this pawn because of the of the fork but also uh, can take the bishop because of the promotion to the queen and black would win the game again so uh, here Serper thought for a moment and he played king on e1 and now in this moment actually Ioannis Nikolaidis resigned the game so it was very very exciting game I haven't seen anything like that so imagine again that one player sacrificed all his pieces how many times did you sacrifice all the pieces and still manage to win the game that's pretty exciting uh, and uh, why he resigned he resigned because uh, nothing can be done but I would like to show you very interesting idea here actually after knight on f4 and attacking the queen 
queen can move of course on e4 and attack both of the pieces now the thing is that black can create some kind of the fortress so if white pick up the bishop then um, black actually can attack the g2 pawn with the fork and uh, it's pretty interesting so that would be some chance but actually it's also uh, losing for black this is why Ioannis Nikolaidis um, resigned the game what could happen here for example uh, king on d6 queen on b4 just picking up the the pawn and now king on c6 and even now after queen on c6 white can uh, pick up the the bishop and you know uh, fall into that trap because uh, white has more pawns and would win the game anyway so king on d6 and now uh, queen e3 and after this fork um, of course white is winning with two extra pawns um, so this is why in this position uh, Ioannis Nikolaidis resigned the game okay so uh, as always I leave the link in the description if you want to analyze this crazy game um, I leave the link to, to the study on leeches and if you like this video press a like if for some reason you don't like this video press unlike and leave the comment if you know any other crazy games I would love to you know um, show make the a commentary about that crazy games they, they they are so awesome to comment and i really enjoy that and uh, if you don't want to miss any other games like this just press subscribe press the bell button and thanks for watching and see you in the next one